boys, my name is Koyoshi, and welcome back to my blind playthrough. Well, those episodes, rather, of my blind playthrough. The Xenoblade Chronicles 3 for Switch with the Japanese voices enabled. <clears throat> In the last vi video, I will happy to let you know that I finally finished the gem crafting. Believe me, this is actually kind of important, because we're probably not going to complete this next setup unless we had done gem crafting, so... Believe me, this is a 100% requirement to get the battle done, and if you ask me, it was very important. Oh, man. Anyway. So, um... You're probably wondering what I'm doing in the city. I never actually wanted to stay here. But that's because, in the end of the last video, I upgraded my final weapon, finally. But... I learned something a little bit unique. There's a series of super weapons. Well, more like super um, accessories that we can collect. But the only way to find these so-called super accessories is to go to each of the you see the seven locations and collect them from a special chest. I'm going to be showing all those locations in the same video. Just so I could uh, briefly show off where they are. And because we still have yet to get some of them. So we're going to be doing that alongside exploring. And in hopes of that, be able to get some other stuff. By the way, I find this one to be kind of boring. I wish they at least like left a unique monster there to guard it. But yeah, that's by far the easiest one to attain. Yeah. It's kind of a joke. Okay, so the second one, we're actually going to do things a little bit differently. Don't worry, we're not going to be wasting our time doing secondary spots, nor are we going to be, um... Forgetting about some setups, so I forgot to mention this isn't just a regular mix video, this is an exploratory series video, too. So, if you remember in some of our previous episodes, we explored through most of the world, but we didn't actually get to fully complete the map, so I figure since I did 100%, I'm going to try and show off all these. Also, you need to discover all secret locations and regular locations anyways as part of a Soul Hacker upgrade, which definitely could have probably want that Soul Hacker upgrade, so for sure we're gonna go around it. Fun fact, you don't actually have to fight any opponents. I initially thought that you needed to be level 95 to 88, and you're supposed to actually be that live a level. The problem is, um, it's because uh, you'd have to sneak past these really high level monsters otherwise, most of which would probably one-shot you. However, with the right setup and some very close edge proximities, you can see that we're actually able to skip most of them, so none of the actual battles are required. It initially seems like they are, but you can just kind of barely sneak past them with some weird shenanigans and like resetting the mobs. And for this one, if you just run into this middle spot, you'll get a landmark, and you, if you get that within time, then you can just take an intentional death here and then just finish off the other stuff. Anyways, we're getting a couple of things in here. The first main being being the couple of chests that we missed. Oh wow, they spawned in really early. Ah, uh, we were just slow enough. So, I am going to show off at least a couple of battles with the setup because, um, um, we have changed our setup a little bit and you can see that it's quite broken. Essentially, um, the idea with this effect setup, oh, I'm not uh, attacking nearly as fast as I want, is basically for a lot of these later battles, 
the setup recommends using stuff like Quiet Faith and a secondary buff setup. So you're probably wondering what I'm even doing here. What? Well, as I basically did a specific setup, particularly on Cena, and this is also another reason why I'm controlling her. Where I'm basically just doing non-stuff buffs. And then just immediately sharing them to the party so we can get all of them out. And you're probably wondering why we're doing that. Well, this class is very busted in fact that it can not only deploy buffs really quickly, but you can quickly deploy other arts with it. And if you combo arts quickly enough, you hardly really have to do any auto attacks altogether and just immediately do other stuff. On top of it, I've linked Shadow Eye, one of the cooldown abilities, which is going to heavily reduce our egg roll and just make sure that we don't see that. Essentially, with this setup, I'm able to spam buffs with um, this class faster than any other setup would otherwise allow for it. And buffs are really special in particular for one specific reason. I'm going to show that off in a minute. I don't know why. My inner rank is still level zero. Uh, I don't know why it's stuck at level zero, because uh, usually it's at level one by now, but that might be a specific problem I have to account for. That's weird, because usually I do get... Uh, it, it, usually the, the inner rank is on by and on gone up to level three, so I don't know if I triggered something that um, messed things up or... Oh yeah, that's right, okay. Yeah, I almost forgot. Um, you can't even use Ouroboros here. So if you're wondering why that failed, yeah. You can't even use Ouroboros here, so that makes sense. And I think it stops you from even using Ouroboros altogether. Yeah, it says your Ouroboros powers are being suppressed here. So, naturally it's kind of trolly. But... Still, though, like, with the right sneaking, you can actually get all of the containers without really triggering any enemies at all, and it's kind of ingenious. But anyways, remember this buff setup, as the, you'll see why we're controlling Cena now, because uh, essentially, with the not the even control setup and a few other things, you can basically spam buffs faster than any other class in the game. Uh, it's gonna be very useful for some of these battles upcoming. Anyways, though, it's very important because uh, come this next battle series, we're actually going to be fighting a few enemies here. So there is another Legacy of the Seven artifact. However, it is guarded by these enemies. You can actually skip them, and you probably would want to skip them the first time you come in here if you're not 99. But if you ask me... I already am 99, and I personally do not care, so we are going to fight them. We're going to set focus attacks on so that we can get stunned and start the buff spamming. Now, I think there's a specific setup of this this, so I may have to like change this a bit later. But there's a specific setup that allows you to just get a lot of buffs very quickly. And one effect in particular will actually allow us to get quite faith at the start of battle, which is one of the two random buffs effects. If you're wondering, uh, I did give uh, somebody the soul after effect. I've changed up a couple of steps. The paint actually recommended using like two of the same specific character set. The way I dealt with it is I used you as my second um Second signifier is what this class is called. Oh wow, he immediately um did a lure effect. That's kind of annoying. Uh and it and it target blocks us again. That's really annoying. Now, normally in most of these regular battles, if we weren't using any secondary effects, the first thing we would try to do is use...
That was dumb. I don't know why I uh, changed off of that. This works. We're just gonna chain him right away to get him out of the way so we don't have to deal with that. Didn't really get good luck here. So, uh, I have a, quite a few changes with the setups. For one, I have a uh, setup with Noah that allows for the AoE slash ability to be built to bed, so yeah. My big, I have a couple of similarities to similar setup that other people use, but I changed it a little bit in a couple of other setups. So anyways, I'm going with a new route that started to use Uni as part of the effect sound, but unfortunately we didn't get the full effect because we didn't actually get the launch character off. We actually want to get launch off if we can, and I'll show you in a minute, I do hike I have at, at, on at least one of my characters. I think Noah might actually have it. No, wait, no. Yeah, see, I made Lance a, one of those soaring tentless lasses or whatever. why I changed him to have Seminella until I was like, this morning I changed him to not have that ability, but he seems to always have that somehow. I'll probably just give him a secondary launch now, if I come up in it. But yes, I made Tyon a Light Sage instead of a Signifier, because I thought he'd be better suited to that role, and we need a bit more raw healing, because uh, all of the Pain of Fire healing is mostly over time, but I've went with this setup a lot with um, also having Pace Blast, and yes, that was a very unlucky start. Ideally, for this scenario setup this time, we want to either tie on Noah, well, actually, just either Noah or Uni would work best. Well, we got neither of those, and so because of that, we couldn't even force that Eritre to come back, which was kind of sad. So I guess I'm just gonna spam Taki on Slash PLA instead. It's normally not what I do with this setup, but I guess that's fine ever. So, and now I'm gonna share the box. This is the big thing now. If you use a share buff effect on these characters, and characters with a specific setup, yeah, she doesn't actually attack, so she'll actually keep the power charge. So you can use that power charge to actually do some really strong damage. Ideally, in most radio scenarios, we get one of our attackers back, but we got really unlucky those first couple of times, and because of this route now, we have to do it in kind of reverse. Alright, I'm gonna do Noah first. In a radio route, I'd also show off, um... I answer this finisher, though, though in Mio's is not terrible, I guess. But, there's a couple of things I found out about these characters. One big thing I actually forgot about. It's completely different. Okay, come to the next battle, I'm gonna probably have at least one thunder, so... I think Phil literally just got a buff that she already had, which is kind of annoying. It still does really good damage, by the way. Yeah, I picked a good time to use that. I guess I'm using this and then using Uni uh, at the start of the next part. Oh wait, no, I don't really need it. Wow, and it insta-ended. Interesting. I don't know why it insta-ended. We haven't even done the big battle yet. One of the biggest things, though, is I believe I have a set in which upon its activation actually allows me to immediately sh give ourselves some random buffs. Then I can share my own buffs with the party again to make the set so I can. Essentially, this just ensures that we can get buffs out, like, 
pretty much at the very start of the battle, and it's quite ingenious, actually. It's one of the most best setups. Anyways, I promised I would show at least the Lady of Legacy of the Seven pairs, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. I honestly don't know why I have that. I think I completely forgot to change the art, so I completely forgot I had that. Although, essentially, the intention is I'm not controlling any of the other characters, nor am I controlling an attacker. I usually like to play an attacker, but I'm actually controlling Cena for this setup, because I found out the right pass setup, you can actually get your arts off pretty quickly, and then tumble the arts into each other. So, you can actually get buffs out really quickly, so even if uh, some other characters have some really weak setups. This actually really strong on that, and it actually allows us to get really powerful. We're not going to see that the last game. We don't really need to. I initially thought these were a super boss, but they're not. They're just slightly stronger monsters. So we took those both out. And we got... The Solace Reigns for that uh, award. We're gonna look at all of them now eventually. Once we're done with this bet, we just need to look at the stuff more. Before I do anything else, though, I need to change Tyon in particular. I don't know what caused him to equip Solid Albet. I could have sworn that I didn't equip that on him initially. Uh, the daze is actually just for a fast recharge, by the way. I want this, actually. I want at least two of those, if possible. That could help out a bit more. Even though Lance does have Soaring Tempest by default, so that means his, his most used arts, although lately he hasn't been used yet. I set it up in a specific way so that if we needed to, we could get a topple on. The reason the daze is up is, well, Exclusively just for faster fusion arts. Other than that, though, I have very specific setups on all of them, with, like good chick or other stuff, and I've made Tyon is specifically a reviver, so essentially he's gonna handle most of our revive duties. That and Fiona, and I only have to revive if I absolutely need to. But I guess I may as well show the setup while I'm at it. Not much changes with the set editor, but I have a few things to help out, like boost protector side speed, so hard speed, so I can get uh, attacks off sooner. Boost power and extends duration of buffs, as well as the Ertis to boost the speed of revival if I really need it. And now I'm gonna have the Solus veins as well. And then there's this, which. Fills Chain Attack Garage slightly on our execution. This is pretty useful because in most of these battles, you just want to end it with a Chain Attack. Although, typically, what you want to do to make it easier is another reason why I'm controlling CN in particular is we want to use Lance and theirs Fusion Art because one of their, um, well, or both arts rather, is an automatic launch. Yeah, it automatically launches. I didn't know about that. I need to actually make sure that that's on the effect. And another thing I also have to do... Ooh, I might have already gotten it. Is, uh... I, I, I made sure that we had the skill Shared Blessing. You can share this from Uni, and this gives us a 500% damage increase if we get a lot of buffs on our party. And that's for every buff on the party in general, so... Now you can see how broken that might be. It basically means that we get stupidly overpowered. And then there's some other characters that have the devotional necklace, which means basically whenever they revive, Tyon in particular has this, they'll immediately revive with all their arts on cooldown already done, and they'll be able to just immediately deploy arts again. This is extremely useful for most scenarios. Otherwise, though, um, yeah, I don't know why I had the summon element. In hindsight, I should probably not even have Sworn Tempest on to begin with. The idea was if I could set this up properly, we can actually skip the Oribel's transformation altogether, and that's ideally what I want to actually have happen. Have them 
like somehow activate a launch cobble on their own, and if all the characters are revived and the launch cobble is still effect, as long as I don't have a smash, I can go straight into a chain attack with that efficiency. And one of the because one of my attack setups has us boosted damage to what we do to the launched enemy. So ideally, we want to launch, then begin a chain attack. If we uh, set it up on a topple though, it won't be that big of a deal since as you can see I set up Tyon properly so I can just use him if I want to. Otherwise though, yeah. He's kind of useful. Now the setup is a little bit different. The initial setup actually recommended using a jar because one of her art... Not only does she give up, have a guaranteed amazing, which is actually pretty good, uh, she also... Um, Gives a secondary effect as well. Anyways, there's actually... Okay, but seriously, let's uh, go to the next step. Sorry if I'm taking a little while to go to each of these locations, but... Uh, fun fact, I actually haven't visited a lot of the locations yet. I might make this a bit of a longer video, because, um, as you might have guessed, this is also supposed to be a Neek Teodster cleanup as well. But, you probably already expected. By the way, unfortunately, food buffs no longer matter. The only thing they matter for now is CP, experience boost, and drop boost now. So, if anything, we probably want more gold now, more than anything. Anyways. Anyway. <coughs> oh, jeez. Anyways. <coughs> oh my gosh. My, no. Anyways. <laughs> I think I've said that for like the third time now. Um... We need to go up here somehow. And this is the part where I'm really shelling. So, I think I've mentioned this before and I'll mention this again. This is technically still a blind playthrough. I still have yet to find a lot of the exploratory efforts. So, in fact, while I do my setup for my third part of the video, I am definitely going to um, be grinding stuff. But for now, I want to use this setup to make things safer. You know, now I think of it, since I was able to do a certain save setup, let's quickly save over this new setup. As you can see, I've rewritten my story one to now save balance. This is like my ultimate setup. And the reason why I want to keep it is because I think that's what I'm also going to use for challenges. I'm just testing it in super boss format for now, and if we can get uh, the super bosses defeated easily with this, then we obviously stand a big chance against the challenge modes as well, and so we're going to immediately use it because of that. As for my setup, I still don't know yet. I'm still thinking about using a soul hacker, but it might honestly be better to use someone different. Because some characters have slightly different power-ups based off of their abilities, so some might be a little bit better. Like, Uni has a very mis it's an really strong buff in particular to, well, I guess mostly is her levels. She has 500%, up, up to 500%, if you have a lot of buffs. Um, but anyways, so yeah, this is basically just a crumbled building in the middle of nowhere we can climb up. If we climb up all the way to the very top, we'll find a landmark. I'm gonna intentionally fall down here, because, uh, this is how we get to the chest. Oh, oh, okay, never mind. It was right up here. I just needed to go around a different side area.
Yeah, I thought it was actually out there, but... Okay, looks like we have to hold it further for that chest. That's not our focus, though. Our focus is over here. There's another unique monster that we have to battle for this chest. This one can be done much easier, though, and it's much earlier on. Fortunately, it seems like... Oh. Yeah, see here, just... There is a sneak trick, though, just like the previous one. If we interact with the monster thing behind the effect, we can essentially skip the battle with the unique monster altogether. I don't know why I did that set up early. I was hoping to actually create the battle a bit sooner. But essentially, we cancel art abilities into each other and then use press dodging to do other stuff. Ideally, just staying in one place, and if we set this up properly, we can pretty much make. Uh, pretty much get our characters buffed, super buffed up. And some of these buffs have really useful effects, particularly increasing. HP, strength, well, all sorts of stuff. There's also power, ever so useful power charge. Which heavily increases our damage we dealt. So obviously it's really useful. A big thing I'm trying to do though, is do a lot of damage in just a minute. I think i really bummer a bit. Because I actually want to go into Interrate Global 3 with Lance and Uni because, uh, Lance and Tyon because, uh, Lance, jeez, I cannot say this properly, Lance and Cena, jeez, alright, I did not get a uh, offensive character right away, unfortunately, so this is kind of a lucky start. Ideally, you want to get one of the attackers first, but keep getting Tyon first instead. Still don't use Uni, now. In an ideal scenario, we want to use Uni as much as possible, because one of her effects, and you'll see why in a minute, gives her a 225% damage multiplier on the, uh, on the class she's using. Whenever she um, doesn't miss an attack in battle, keyword, doesn't miss, but in chain attacks, you can't actually miss to begin with, so yeah, you can see how useful that would be. She and Noah also have the boost damage to launch enemies by 150%. So that means all this damage is being multiplied by that number that they do, and you can see that it's gonna make damage very broken, and it's probably gonna be our only way we're gonna kill our character. Since we got Fiona early enough, we're gonna do that. My big strategy change from the other character and I was watching was mainly uh, using Fiona as the second preferred character. Fiona's power up is not only granting power charge, but also gives us a very uh, special effect that I think is really useful. That uh, essentially uh, replenishes our chain attack bar by once. So that means. Technically, we can get two full or those finishers off. One regular one and one two. And so, even if we don't get mean right away on the next start, we can just use somebody else instead and still get the effect done. So, we're gonna use no one next now for that reason. We're gonna use Infernal Dance in particular. This particular modifier I set up specifically on no one does a lot of damage. Already killed the opponent. Although, I want to try and have a bit more fun with this, so. On this next step, I'm gonna do a little bit more damage. The damage is already pretty busted, and this isn't even a super boss. Now, imagine what this is like the other step. Now, I'm gonna use Fatal Barrage with. Yeah. And I think that was about 50k hit. That was before Super Boss. Keep in mind, these attacks cannot be missing, so that means by the end, we just end up doing a lot of damage. And you can see, the moment we use that heart, we already kill them. For some of the weaker posts, I could probably just use Noah's attack a couple of times, and that would probably be faster, but you need So, she can build up to do a lot of damage in particular, the setup we're using, and yeah. 
Essentially, that's how we're going to be killing the super bosses quickly, is ideally we want to kill them all off in one chain attack. And if we really need to, we can use Tyon and Uni's Oral's Fisher as a last ditch effort, because it gives a 500% damage bonus doing that fast. Anyways, we got the third of the three rains. I think we only got one rain before, so... To be fair, there's still a lot more to explore, and we did find a landmark, which was good. And if you're wondering why we're doing this, is also because you technically need a Silaker upgrade that only comes from this, so... Yeah, it's very important to find. Sorry if it is taking a while to get to Asian House, because keep in mind some of these locations I haven't even explored yet. So this is more of a legacy of the seven accessory locations, but also a cleanup of the locations, since most of the actual locations I've already gotten, though the problem is it, it could be kind of tricky. Thank you, Witch. This next one is located very close to another unique monster that I think I mentioned this before. I think we actually fought this guy in our grind series. He was quite tough. And he was quite annoying. We had to like lure him away from this cliff and then burst him a couple of times. We ultimately end up using a lure strategy. Well, I forgot to mention if we jump behind where he is, you get an item that you can get from this called the Saturni Reigns. Now, the Saturi Reigns is probably the single most full of these accessories in the game besides, I think, another one, which we're going to pick up. Which uh, says boost attack by 40%. In fact, it's so useful that we're going to immediately put it on Uni, replacing her base attack buff. And this essentially does more damage. I did have a 60% damage boost instead as an alternative. But I think this one is a little bit better since I believe it's more a uh, directly higher attack, and this one just kind of works different for some reason. That's before I um, get too confused. I better um, actually put a ceramic belt back on simply because this actually just directly modifies all of your attack damage, but just boost the damage you deal with certain enemies so it doesn't necessarily work out well so i want to set it up like that i'm not going to save the party formation just yet because there's a couple of good accessories left most of them funnily enough are available in cadentia which means if you did some of dodging around you could probably actually get most of them anyway i think this next one is on like double ink or something Oh yeah, 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 it's back here in this random area. This is a little bit of a longer walk one, by the way. Yeah, it's even sped up. Obviously, I am not a regular viewer, so I cannot speed this up, so... Uh, yeah, it's kind of radius. But you basically have to go through this big jump going up this little cliff and just kind of fall through one series of events. It's high to you, if you ask me. By the way, I don't really care for my food buff anymore. Experience isn't needed. Drops I've already basically gotten the best gems from, so I think the only thing that'd be beneficial now is just maybe some regular items for our cooking. But even then, that's not really that useful. Hi. I'm gonna show the full route to this because, um... I don't know if we've gotten all of the landmarks here necessarily yet, and also uh, to show you how long this really takes, like, I imagine lots of people speed it up normally, but now imagine trying to do that. Wait, actually, I might have already gotten it. Hang on, let's chat. I can just check from here. 
But yeah, you would then zip line over to this outer area, and that's how you would actually get the accessory. So. It's not lit up, so I imagine I already have it. Actually, if I set it up properly, then it should have already been equipped. Yeah, yeah, it's the Lune Reigns. That's the one that comes from there. That is, like, the super ultimate accessory. That, like, boosts damage that fusion arts do by about 100%. That is really, really busted. Probably the most busted accessory in the game. Considering we use the fusion arts guaranteed as part of using a chain attack, you can see that that's almost immediately beneficial and also somewhat shell in the beginning too. Since while the AI doesn't always use fusion arts, they still try to do it whenever they can. So ultimately, there's a lot of stuff to add. On. But yeah, I think this one actually has the loot, a rain accessory. But yeah, you would. Do this fake boot. If you wonder when we first got that accessory, I basically um got this from somewhere else. Okay, this next one, I'm honestly not sure if I got in this one either. By the way, a pro tip seems all of the items we need for this effect are mostly in Cadentia, which is kind of interesting. So, yeah. Now, this next one is a little bit tedious, though. You'll see why in a minute. You can only see this one by basically just looking down at the bottom of a particular spot. And... If you look closely enough, you'll see a random chest area off in the middle of the nowhere. And you're probably wondering, yes, that's a legacy of the seven accessory, but how are you supposed to get it? Well, I'll answer your question right now. We have to get it in the most flashiest way possible. Essentially, we have to do a jump in the middle of the thing. Ideally, land on the other Zet Stone, which is very difficult to line up properly, and then jump from there to a nearby Vine, ideally. That's our only way to do that without dying. But there's actually a simpler way that I'm going to show you now. But yeah, it's basic. basically we get to play a little bit of pro Mario hard uh, platforming setup. We basically wait until the thing comes to around this area, and then we try to jump and aim for this platform around here. It's <laughs> kind of an interesting mechanic they threw into this part, and I think it's actually quite a fun challenge. And for doing all that, we get the Mercury Rains. And I'll show what effect these have. I actually will show all the effect these have at some point. But this one boosts the critical rate by 60%. Very good on a high critical rate crass. So, going to make use of that at some point. Yes, there is, by the way, there is still some other spots I've yet to explore. I'll be exploring those in my next video or some sorts. I said, Cadencia is really tedious to explore. There's just so much car to explore. Now you pretty much be forced to stop and walk around every single island just to get it. Like, this game is massive, and I do mean it. That is really, really big. It is easy by any means to get any of these done. Okay, so this next one is honestly not bad. I think we might have already picked it up. Yeah, this one's just a storyline one. The Lost Colony. When you go to explore it, 
Uh, you'll eventually just find this randomly over here. So, the way we check if all the legacy of the seven accessories are had is we should have six cannot sells. Oh, there's actually a seventh one, the legendary biter. We got that from one of our caves when we were exploring in a different video, though. Oh, well, okay, this is nice. So you can see we have them all now. The Martis Reigns, the Mercury Reigns, Iovis Reigns, Veneris Reigns, this one's not as useful, as Solace Reigns. So we have all seven of the Reigns now. So this is more of a, we're try we were just trying to look for the strongest Reigns in the game. Now there are a few things I want to do with them before I do anything set up properly. So, I think one of my characters has a really good block rate boost thing, so... Yeah, see, Mew actually has a really good block rate, so I think what I'm gonna do... I initially had her with a little bit of armor, but I think it would be a bit safer to at least make use of the accessories, so instead, I'm gonna actually put that rain on now. Well, actually, not that one. There's the Ayas Reigns, but there's also a one that boosts block rate by a significant amount. Should be right here. I'm gonna put that on. And wow. Okay, so now the block. <laughs> so I. By the way, this isn't a perfect block rate. Right? I think they automatically adjust it to 99%. But <laughs> if the setup does work properly, you do. <laughs> this. Uh. <laughs> she will basically block everything now. That. She had sasses too. I'm gonna keep the hero vamp braces on her because we basically fight mostly high level enemies anyway, so we want to have access to this. So, anyways, that's one thing I wanted to change. The second was just make sure that Uni has the Saturning Reigns, which are the strongest attack item in the game. And both of them also have fiber wraps. And then, other than that, uh, we kind of just have other stuff there in throughout the game. One thing I am going to do, though, is I have Circle Enlightenment on at least one character. That's going to get replaced with the Solus range, so Ion's now going to have that. So we're going to make use of all the accessories, basically, which is nice. Well, not all of them. There are some that we don't make use of, obviously, but we're basically making use of some of the better ones. So about four or five of the accessories are now being used now. I feel like that'll help my setup a bit. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed that small exploratory set because that's going to be the end of the episode, sort of. Because I'm doing an exploratory video, I figured I may as well make a setup. Do our things. Okay, good. We saved that. This is just to make sure that when we uh, change off of the setup app for any reason, which we will eventually, we can immediately change back to it at the beginning. Anyway, I think for our last bit of my video, I'm actually going to make this go to 50, because I think I've said this before, I'll mention this again, I do want to actually explore most of these areas, so I'm going to start doing that exactly. So, what I mean by this is I want to actually uncover all of the map spots. That's basically what I want to do for 100%. Uh, at minimum, explore all the landmarks, but uncover all the map spots in particular, using these islands as sort of a setup to figure out where to go. That's the idea, basically. Which, if I want to do this faster, I could probably just use the boat. So now I'm going to show you how fast exploring can actually be. If you know what you're doing. <laughs> if you wonder why now so many of our videos have uh, our map exploration. 
So I this so uh, that's because I was waiting until later to do it. And obviously there's a specific reason like this. Uh the big reason is there's a soul hacker upgrade that can only be upgraded to the max if you've explored every single landmark in the game. And of course the easiest way to explore to get all of you have art involves Boat just kind of gets stuck here. Oh, okay, so we are able to sneak through here. It's just kind of tricky. Is this in our unique monster location? I don't know. There's a random still that's uh, up to the right. Anyways, I'm gonna try to explore all the areas I can using the map as a reference guide. Okay, I. Sorry, this looks like just a ravine series of drawings, uh, uh, driving. But, uh, I, I really, uh, really do like certain NSA. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. I think this spot is next. Oh, yeah, right here. I was going to say this part of the side. Okay, now we've seen a little bit more of that. We've revealed a narrow case where we can find stuff. Which is good. I can see why uh, my friend said uh, that this game was really long. Gosh dang. This one region alone is really hard to actually explore all of its stuff. Thankfully, you can cut out a significant portion of the exploring just using your boost to explore around the edges. But that's probably what I would be doing normally, is uh, exploring around the edges of the areas first. Make sure I know where the edge spots are located and then just kind of curving around the islands that I want to explore. By the way, this whole area on the edge here, I couldn't explore at all, because back when I tried to explore it, this was the Agnes Castle, so we couldn't actually explore it until a bit later. Oh, well, uh, that was worth it, sort of. We found a unique monster location again. They have to have these rail islands out in the middle of nowhere, because the way they set up these unique monster locations is they basically get so uh, <laughs> And yes, I do also have double the field, so I forgot to mention that. I have advanced cooldown for the single reason of doubling the amount of field for air to actually use in battle. Which means we can get out buffs with prior faith even faster, just using both rings in quick succession. So, because of that, it causes us to get our talent art really fast, and it's really useful. 
One thing I probably actually want to do is uh, set the combo to smash. I'm sorry, we use vowels so we don't accidentally use secondary vowels. Um, if you're wondering why the top will probably not what happened, oh, that's because I only have one top one this time. For going for the optimal setup, you typically don't even have a top one those two other times. You know, now I think of it, I on to the second time. Alright, so because we're doing the set, I guess we get to show off the full effect of this. Because first we want to get, um... So we basically spam art for Sinna until Lance's art comes up. And I already use this talent art, because the talent art forces a launch on the opponent. Then we cancel out of the effect before immediately using a attack. By the way, it's a lot perfect as you can see. Noah actually kind of armed us here. This might be one reason why I might actually keep Noah's for buff off, because uh, his buff does include a like all, so yeah. I couldn't get that off. I'm just gonna chain normally, because uh, there are actually multiple stats. Again, we didn't really get much. We were forced to do tie on again, so, so at least we can like use Spencer R if we need to. He's already almost dead, so I think I might just deploy both of my attackers at the start instead. Well, that's what I would do normally, but um, I guess since we got very unlucky with hearts, we better use uh, our safety arts instead. We'll share our own buffs a second time this Lance is going to use his break. I set up Lance with two different break cards as backup now. My biggest change is, instead of having one character with just one break card and no extra attack steps, I have one character with two break cards instead, so there's a slightly better chance of the back tapping. Okay, there we go. We got no one, so now we can do the kill that we wanted to do, which is what I think I'm actually Fatal Barrage. Since we didn't get a break on, we're going to use our... Oh yeah, I'm trying to use it this. Tucky on Slash Burst tonight. For some of that, it killed him. Best part of him, probably. I think he's used access to the launch damage when he's transformed too. I do like the dude's bed though, it is pretty cool. I, 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 I start to get why the setup, uh, I, the setup recommended not using this particular setup like that. This one works out, maybe. <laughs> I was trying to do something that uh, gave us an overkill since we don't really need the extra oops. I just wanted to kill his opponent super fast. So we got an hour soul act, dual attack. I did say we're gonna do a Neek Monster Clean Up at some point. But it actually reminds me, I guess there's one other thing I wanna do. Since that setup did not seem to work, we're just gonna. Put on something that does a lot of damage instead. Certain other ones might be too strong for AoE though, so for now, I might actually just give him one of his stronger arts, not Sword of Valor. That's an interesting one though. Perry and Salvo. For some AoE, I guess. That's actually the art that's supposed to be on him, but. I changed it for Lady Savage because I thought that would be useful in battles to have a smash side. He kind of timed it out a poor time. He kind of just goes into it, whatever. Yeah, the AI's kind of shake me sometimes. They do like to prioritize combos where they can, so sometimes they'll prioritize Ijin Assassin, so yeah, that can kind of mess you up. 
Anyway, um, sad to say we're not gonna actually be taking on the super bosses yet, if anybody was worried. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna end this episode right here. Hope you guys enjoyed, and leave a like, enjoy, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I promise this next video will be either very short or very long, because it'll be exclusively challenging the super bosses we haven't gotten yet. So yeah, let's get going. Bye.